Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Friday, the 22nd day of April, year of our Lord, 2022. Do pray this finds you well. It's warming up. Uh, I think it's in the 60s right now. It's been warming up all day, but raining all day. So it was a good day to shampoo the carpets, which is exactly what I did. Uh, relaxing now, watching the the uh, White Sox, and they're up in Minnesota. I think Chicago has another team. I forget what they're called, though. Uh, we, uh, uh, again, are supposed to have some very nice weather tomorrow. Uh, just for those of you who do not ride motorcycles, watch for the motorcycle riders, and please, this is uh, one of my many reminders to you as the motorcycle season falls upon us now in earnestness. Please do not text wow driving. It is illegal in the state of Illinois, and I know our county, long overdue, as now uh, Rock Island County, has uh, upped its enforcement efforts, uh, but it's very difficult law to enforce unless the cop sees you doing it. If I see you doing it, I'm going to pull up next to you to uh, a stoplight or stop sign and let you know that I've seen you do it. It is dangerous. I see accidents all the time. Most of them, thank God, are relatively minor, but occasionally people get killed because somebody isn't paying attention while they're driving and they drift uh, into another lane or don't notice that the light has changed. And this is not uh, this is not a phenomenon that is uh, uh, the habit, the bad habit of a particular age group. I notice all age groups doing it. So remember. Watch out for those motorcycles, and the only way you're going to be able to spot them is to keep your head up and your eyes open while you're driving. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace of the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And we turn again to the daily lectionary, the New Testament reading assigned for this day from that daily lectionary. And we read from Hebrews chapter 12, specifically tonight, verses 1 through 24. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood, and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they discipline us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than unpleasant, rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. 
that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further message be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable, innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. And that is the word of the Lord. And this sermon, which is what Hebrews is, a lot is packed in to this. And you do think about that. You know, I, uh, we sort of have the luxury nowadays. I, you get to hear me every night if you choose. Every Sunday I preach. Uh, but this is maybe the only opportunity this particular preacher, and again, I'm arguing as many of the ancient church fathers and many scholars would say that St. Paul wrote this. You can't say that definitively, remember, but anyway, you when you're writing a sermon and sending it to somebody, or you realize that you might only have one opportunity to speak, and we should always work as pastors to speak clearly and precisely, but I also know I'm going to have next week and the next night to unpack a thought, like I do in these, you know, it's like I know what we're reading will continue through, and I decided to do that this year with these, just to read through particularly the New Testament. We'll go back to the Psalms at some point, and maybe the Old Testament, uh, but we'll read through these books where we can. And it's nice, because you can build on it from night to night. Well, you know, the, this, the preacher here doesn't have that luxury, so he has to speak very clearly, very precisely, and pack a lot in for that one time. So it's long. It's longer than any sermon I've ever preached, but it's uh, also magnificent. So there is a lot in every one of these chapters, and I did not read the whole chapter tonight. I read what the Daily Lectionary asked me to read, and that was verses 1 through 24. So there's a lot I could talk about. We just don't have the time. Um, so what I want to talk about is this idea of discipline and what the preacher here does with it. And there's some wonderful gospel themes. And I remember that. And we, if you're a parent, you know, you know why do you discipline your kids? Because you love them. And we've all been around parents who want to be their kids' best friends. And it's nice if you can be your kid's friend. But often when they're in those years, you know, um, and I went through it, uh, you know, in those years, you don't see eye to eye with your parents. You think you know everything. And let me tell you right now, if you're a teenager listening to this, you don't. All of us adults know we don't know everything. But I'm going to give you just a word of encouragement here if teenagers are listening to this. And I tell them this. Uh, they're probably not listening to this, but when I, and I do teach a lot of um, teenagers. That, you know, your parents have been down these roads that you are going down. As have your grand grandparents. They're, I mean, things look different. The temptations uh, are still there that we all face. Uh, they, they're maybe a little different now. There's Or there's more of them at the from the standpoint of they're at our fingertips where they, you know, they, they didn't used to be. But, you know, we're all cut out of that same cloth. We're all under that same curse. And your parents have wisdom, the wisdom that comes not only from being godly people, we pray that they are, but also from just experience and the mistakes they've made. So listen to them. It's a strange thing our culture has done, and it's not a good thing. Uh, and there's this is a lecture for another day. But... Teenagers are trained to find wisdom in places where wisdom should not be found. Uh, there are teachers who might have an agenda. Now, your teachers can be wise, and I was blessed with good teachers, and I don't want to throw them all under the bus, but sometimes your teachers are very young. 
and don't have much more life experience than you uh, and don't necessarily have the wisdom of age to sort of sort these things out. And, you know, you, you will, uh, teenagers will often, often uh, look at their best friends sitting next to them, and it's great to have friends and best friends, you know, and they, they do come and go through our lives. There, we, we, you know, there's some that we have all our lives. Um, uh, most of us know the one or two people like that or maybe a few more. But some of the good friends that we've had from childhood, they, they come and go. They've moved away or their lives, our lives have gone in different directions, particularly me as being a pastor and coming to that late in life. Um, that has taken my life on a different path than many of my friends uh, that I knew in high school. So I don't know many of them anymore. I don't live near uh, many of them anymore except for a couple. But anyway, you think about those days, you know, when you're in high school or kids now who are in high school and they, and they look over at their uh, best friend and say, well, what do you think? Like somehow they have more experience than you. You know, they don't know any more than you. They're the same age. It's nice to ask for their opinion, but I don't know that I would hang my hat and, and uh, plot my life's course on what they say. I might want to go to somebody who's been around a little bit more. So back to the point of Hebrews here, discipline. You know, we as parents who love our children, discipline them. Why? Now, I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about discipline. Why? So that they'll learn. And most of us who have children realize we don't quite get that until you, your first child's born and you're holding that child in your arms. You think, oh, now I see why my parents didn't let me do X, Y, or Z, or they disciplined me. You know, they taught me discipline. Uh, no, you're not going there. No, you're not. I don't know who's going to be there. It's, oh, mom, you know, all the, the stuff we did and all the stuff that still happens today. So anyway, God does this too. He disciplines us. Why? Because you know, for the, same, for, the, for the same reason we do it as parents, because he loves us. Um, it's, it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. And every one of you, male or female, listening tonight, man or woman, you are a son of God. Now, why do I say that? Because you are covered with the blood of Christ. And we've already covered that ground in Hebrews. You are covered with the blood of Christ. And so when God sees you, he sees his son. That's why you are holy and righteous as you stand before God. You're not in and of yourself, but covered with Christ, you are. You're perfectly holy, perfectly righteous, so you can stand in the presence of God and live. And we hear at the end of this about this terrifying mountain. You know that it, you know, don't even touch it. You know, but in Christ, we can go there. Because we're covered with Christ, we can go into the presence of God. And only because we're covered with Christ. So anyway, um, we are sons of God, and God loves us, so he disciplines us. Just like you as a parent who disciplined your child, God wants the absolute best for you. And he will discipline you, you know, that you will grow and learn and begin to understand. And it's, you know, it seems painful while you're going through it, and it's, it happens in a myriad of different ways. But it's always for your good. And you can maybe sit and think about this when I'm done here tonight and, re and reflect on your life where... You know, things were painful, whether you were dealing with illness or the consequences of your sin. And you look back now, years later, or maybe not that, that long later, but you know, for a lot of us it's years later, and think, wow, I now see what God was doing. I can't understand everything he was doing, but I see, you know, I was drawn closer to him, drawn closer to my, my, uh, my brothers and sisters in the life of the church, um, you know, and, and it's and you thank God for that, even though dirt while you were in the in, in the midst of it, whatever it was, you're like, oh, you know, is this ever going to end? Where are you, God, and stuff like that? He disciplines, um, so you may grow up in the faith, mature in the faith, and bear fruit. All right, there's a lot we can say about this sermon, this section of the sermon, but uh, let's move on. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A 
a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. All right, we turn to page 294, and we see our, just the, this is again a structure, a daily structure for our daily prayers, like the litany, uh, the litany covers everything, we're not saying that this time of year, uh, this covers everything, but over the course of, of the seven days of the week. So we look down to Friday, and we'll pray for the preaching of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the spread of his knowledge throughout the whole world, for the persecuted and oppressed, and for the sick and the dying. Uh, we'll pray for the sick and the dying every day. Um, and uh, But you notice as we go through, particularly as we approach the weekend, there's more of a focus on preaching and the life in the church because Sunday is typically the day that most of us gather. So let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, strengthen us in these dark and latter days by your Spirit in our churches, that we may be resolved to know nothing amongst you except Christ and Him crucified, and that the the proclamation of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ would reign in our churches, and that through this preaching, the gospel and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ would be spread throughout the whole world. Bless my brothers in office who are serving throughout the world to proclaim the holy name of Christ. Be with our brothers and sisters throughout the world and here in our own land who are persecuted and oppressed for holding up your truth. We ask you to strengthen them in their confession that they may hold fast and turn the hearts of our persecutors and oppressors, that they may stand alongside us and receive forgiveness and confess your holy name. As always, we pray for the sick and the dying. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, Dave, Lucille, Don, Dennis, Betty, for my brothers in office, Tony and Nicholas, for friends of our congregation that have requested our prayers, Jason, Josiah, Joe, Dee, Dylan, and Katie, Marge, Carrie, Julie, and Jill, and all who are crying out to you. Heavenly Father, place your healing hand upon them. Be with the nurses and doctors who care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. Bless their families as they also care for their loved ones who have requested our prayers. But in all things, keep them mindful of your love, the forgiveness which is theirs for the sake of Christ, and the victory over death which is theirs by virtue of their baptism. Heavenly Father, we ask you also to stop this senseless violence in Europe, uh, particularly in the Ukraine. These people and governments who have been given the seat of power and yet use it to seek their own glory and not yours. Heavenly Father, bless us with leaders here and throughout the world who are eager to do your will. Open our eyes as citizens always that we may be seen, that we may see how it is that you would have us care for those around us, our neighbors, especially for those who are the most vulnerable. Heavenly Father, stop the tongues of those who by their words sow the seeds of hatred and discord. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God. Now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll sing a little bit. It's Easter season still, and it will be to the Ascension, which doesn't happen until May. There's 40 days from Easter Sunday to the Ascension, marking the 40 days that the, the Lord walked among us before that Ascension. And so we are still singing Easter hymns in church, and we'll sing one tonight, our Paschal Lamb that sets us free, which we sang, I believe, Easter Sunday. 
Our paschal lamb that sets us free is sacrificed, O keep. The feast of freedom gallantly, let hallelujahs leap. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia again. Sing alleluia, cry aloud, alleluia, amen. Let all our lives now celebrate the feast, let malice die. Let love grow strong anew and great, let truth stamp out the lie. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia again. Sing alleluia, cry aloud, alleluia. Amen. Let all our deeds unanimous confess him as our Lord, who by the Spirit lives in us, the Father's living word. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia again. Sing alleluia, cry aloud, Hallelujah. Amen. Again, that's hymn 473, our Paschal Lamb that sets us free. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.